Hi everyone, I'm the Gnome, and yes, I've been quite late with videos. There was no videos uh, last week, apart from maybe one on Tuesday, so apologies for that. Uh, real life work issues got in the way. Um, wearing 12 hours is a pain in the arse, considering I like to sleep for 12 hours. Doesn't really leave a lot of time left in the day. So what I want to talk to you today about is pundits. And we're going to focus on football pundits because really no other sport matters. So, my first question to yourselves, and I'm happily to wait for the answer, is if you could name to me a good football pundit. Go on, take your time, have a think. I'm still going to be here, so maybe discuss it between yourselves. So only discuss it between yourselves, I don't want any other messages going around whilst you're all watching this. So, thought of one yet? Great. And if you said Mark Lawrenson, right, you can leave. Go on, just go. You can see the door behind me. Just leave. We don't want your kind here. The problem with pundits is, for the vast majority of them, they're pretty awful. What should a pundit bring to analysis of a game? And really, there's that keyword analysis. Pundits shouldn't just be regurgitating the same old cliches you'll hear in the pub. Because if I wanted to hear that, I would stay in the pub more. Pub? Pub? Although, arguably, say I do spend an awful lot of time in the pub already. So much that I can't even say the word pub. So, what should you expect to say? You watch the big Premier League match, cup games, internationals. What should you expect from your pundits? You'd expect them they would have some knowledge of tactics. Some knowledge of the players and be able to pronounce the players' names. They should be able to tell you why things are happening, not just telling you that it's happened, the reasons why. Why has this striker been free? It's more than likely due to a bit of movement, six, seven, eight, nine passes before in the move, but you very rarely get to see that level of analysis. And I'm not saying I've got that, I'm rubbish. I'm, as you more than well know, will sit here and spout the same old cliched crap that everyone else does. So, my big concern is around pundits, because at the BUEC, who've had match of the day for a good few years, there was a couple of years they lost at IDV, but they've had match of the day now for about 20 years, and their coverage is awful. Mark Lawrenson, Alan Hansen, Alan Shearer. Three of the blandest gentlemen you could probably ever hope to meet. They sit on the fence when possible and focus all our attention on their favourite clubs, naming no names, Liverpool, and uh, to the detriment of everything else. It's so bad that I generally don't watch matches anymore. Um, it was a good couple of years ago, I think, maybe watched the last one, because it's just banal pub banter. And you'd think the introduction of Alan Shearer, he's won the Premier League, OK, 96 at Blackburn, he's the Premier League's top goal scorer. he had a blast of managing for all of eight games, you'd think he'd be a good choice because he's had the experience of playing the Premier League under the new era and is a top goal scorer. But no, he's simply there to go, thanks Alan, thanks Mark, I agree with whatever you say. And, I mean, Shearer, you're a good footballer, but you're an awful, awful pundit. Going on to ITV, um, they're also awful. Let's not dwell too much on Andy Townsend because he should be shot. Um, he's probably the worst pundit I've ever seen. And in the studio, we've got Roy Keane, um, Gareth Southgate, and Lee Dixon. Lee Dixon's all right, but he comes from the BBC school of bland, banal uh, commentators and pundits. Who doesn't really bring too much to it? Gareth Southgate. Well, I can tell you a story about Gareth Southgate. In one game I was watching, I think it was by Munich Arsenal, Maybe it was a definitely a Champions League game, because why else would I be watching ITV? Um, I think it was nearly sure it was Arsenal. They went 2-1 down at half-time, and Gareth Southgate's half-time advice, or half-time suggestion, was tactics are now out of the window. It's all about passion. Well, that's absolute bollocks. Uh, by far and away, absolute bollocks. It's all about tactics, taxes, everything. Passion is functionally irrelevant, as proven by Barcelona, who are probably the passionless side in the Premier League, in, sorry, the Premier League in the Spanish League, but they annihilate teams left, right and centre because they've got good tactics and good players. 
Gareth Southgate, who happens to be the chief tactics dude at the um, FA, or some other weird um, title that he's got. I'm pretty sure it changes every week, so I'm not even going to try and Google it. Um, again, because I'm lazy. Um, but his idea was, no, no, don't worry about tactics. Don't worry about changing formation, changing marking, changing players. You just need passion. You just need passion. Which is just like, if I could roll my eyes any further, they'd be going all the way around um, like a fucking uh, one arm bandit. Clearly, you have to do that when I mention one arm bandit. Otherwise, you'll think of the bad guy in The Fugitive. Going out of Sky is where I. S Gary Neville is a good pundit. And by far, Gary Neville is the best pundit. Because even at Monday Night Football, where he gets a good couple of days to spend time in analysing the game. Even at half time he can pull things out better than the match of the day lot get who have a couple of hours after the games to do it. Yes he only gets to focus on one game but the level of attention that he provides, the level of analysis he provides is by far and away better than everyone else. Does that make him a great pundit? Probably not to be honest. He looks good because the competition is awful. Um, so I really like him. Um, he isn't as biased as I thought he was going to be. He calls up a spade a spade. He's willing to slide people off. If you look up his analysis of diving, that was really, really good. Uh, if I can find it, I'll stick it in the link uh, at the bottom so you can have a look at that. That was some really good analysis. And he's just generally a good pundit. Where I'm going with this is BT. BT have bought the rights to some of the bigger games in the Premier League for next season and for about three or four seasons after that. They signed Jay Comfrey of their, as their lead pundit. Because pun, uh, their lead uh, presenter must be a white gentleman. Sorry, just is. So, who are they going to get as pundits? ESPN currently have Kevin Keegan and I think it's Steve McManaman, as far as I know. Um, and you don't want Keegan anyway, shit, for me, because what's Keegan famous for? Quitting, that's right. Getting so far and going, nope, I've had enough, I'm going to quit. He's done that about three or four other jobs he's at. So you don't want him, basically can't be relied upon. You want nobody from BBC, nobody from ITV. There's no way uh, Gary Neville is going to leave Sky. Although maybe he might with the bigger games going on BT. But I think he'll be down for a long contract. So you're looking for somebody new. What should a pundit bring? In theory, a pundit should have played at the highest level. Because if you're going to talk about it, it's better that you would have actually done it. Hopefully, maybe he's won something. As a player or as a manager, he or she, sorry, could be a female. Could be that they're a successful manager or player. But then if you're a successful manager or player, you've probably got a football club to manage and not just going to sit and talk about clubs. Because that's what gets me really mainly on the Sky's coverage. Come on, ex-shite managers, come talk about stuff that you've got no idea about. So, Alan Kirbishley or Ian Dowie, Tell me why you think Alex Ferguson is wrong. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to be a big challenge for BT, and I've got an idea of who I think they should get as a pundit. He's not the biggest uh, or most popular guy anymore, but he has done it to a high standard. Um, ladies might want to watch out. He's still uh, a rambling young gentleman, or so he hopes. And if you haven't guessed it by now, it should be Andy Gray. Andy Gray was the proto Gary Neville. And he'd done it for a number of years on Monday Night Football and also the uh, big Sunday games on Sky. And he was a good pundit. Um, I really enjoyed his coverage. It's probably not everyone's taste, especially not the women knocking about. But he knew his stuff. And yes, he made a fuck up, made some sexual inappropriate jokes. And he's paid his dues. He's been shunted off Sky. Um, is he even on TalkSport anymore? Um, so he's been off air for a couple of years. Now is the perfect time for him to come back. Would he come back? Hopefully. It's now what else he's doing. Um, so I think Jay Comfrey with Andy Gray plus another, I think would be a good and interesting uh, dynamic. I'd like to see them bring in maybe an international player in to represent the kind of international flavour of the Premier League. Maybe a retired player. Viali, he's been a player and a manager. Um, it's a shame Jürgen Klinsmann is the German manager, sorry, the American manager, although not for very long. So I think get Jürgen Klinsmann in. Um, I think that would kind of be a lovely, a lovely mix of old, new, 
and existing Premier League, well not existing, but um, Premier League ex-players. So that's my opinions on who should be pundits and why most of them are bollocks. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed this and I'll be getting more videos up. Um, I am waiting on watching the second half of The Walking Dead for the latest episode of The Walking Dead. So far, it's a pretty fucking good episode. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Please let me know who you think should be a good pundit or who should be on BT. Who should be shot if you only had one bullet between Mark Lawrence and Alan Hansen and Andy Townsend. Hint, line them up, shoot them all at once. So let me know in the comments and all the normal uh, fun stuff. So thank you very much for watching. Cheers everyone. Good night.